We're excited to be here today with Frank Turek. Frank, welcome to the show. Thank you, Gabe. Great being with you. Give everyone just a real quick introduction of yourself and what, what you're passionate about and what you're doing. I wrote a book, co-wrote a book called I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist. So I go to colleges, high schools, churches, and present evidence that Christianity is true. We have a website, crossexamine.org, podcast called I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist TV show, uh, and a lot on social media. I've got a great team. I don't even know how to put a YouTube video up, but they do. <laughs> That's they great. Do. So let's get right into it. Yeah. Eradicating wokeness yeah. in the church and, and not just in the church, but in our own families, in our own friends. Um, what, what's the strategy that you would say to a, to a believer as far as how we can really influence those around us? Well, one way to influence uh, is to ask a lot of questions rather than make statements. Wow. So you might want to ask, why do you believe that? What evidence do you have for that position? Why do you think that's true? Yeah. Uh, because as you know, and many of our audience know, wokeness is merely, to make a simple definition of it, is to treat people based on their identity group rather than their individual behavior. That's really what it is. And as you know, the woke tend to put people into two groups, the oppressed group and the oppressor group. And if you're in the oppressed group, you can't be wrong. If you're in the oppressor group, you can't be right. And what we need to do is point out that that's not the way you treat people. You don't treat people based on their identity group. You treat people based on their individual behavior and you respect everybody because they're made in the image of God. Doesn't mean you agree with them, but you should respect them. Let's go into further detail because some people would say, that a lot of the uh, population that has found themselves to be um, in, in the woke um, culture are reacti reacting to maybe traumas they've had or finding their past experiences that relates to the indoctrination that they've been given, right? And it's almost to the place where they're not in the realm of logic anymore. Oh, no, no, they reject logic. Feelings. Yeah, so, yeah. so do, we, do we get into the logical realm with them? Like, do debates help? Like, is... Is, is apologetics um, useful or, I mean, what, what tools are at our arsenal to actually- Yeah, I'm this? not saying it's gonna work all oh. the time, right? There's no silver bullet, but it's better to be reasonable than unreasonable, isn't it? Yeah, right? certainly. <laughs> I mean, yes, emotion makes life fun, but logic makes life safe. It's real. And yeah. despite the fact that people who are woke will say reason, if you're reasonable, you're an oppressor, mm. There you're trying to use reason to say reason is oppressive. So it's, it's self-defeating ultimately. Yeah. And while you're not going to reach everybody with a reasonable approach, you'll reach some, yeah. right? Yeah. And our job is to do what's right and lead the results to God. So to those that would um, ac accuse you and say, why, sure, you can be a Christian, but why are you so, uh, they, they say judgmental, they say, why does it have to be your way? Why? does the entire world have to line up with what you believe? It doesn't. What is your it, response? It has to rely, line up with what Jesus believed. I'm not the arbiter of truth. I'm not the arbiter of right and wrong. I'm simply saying what Jesus and the apostles said, and there's evidence that what they said is actually true. Yeah. That's what we do, and I don't have enough faith to be an atheist. We show them that the Bible is true. We, all the way from does truth exist to the Bible's the word of God. So we're trying to direct people toward the truth, whether they accept it or not. Well, that's not on any of us, right? You can't lead everybody to Christ, but you can lead everyone or you can bring Christ to everyone. Get right? the opportunity. Yeah, yeah. Here's the opportunity. Sure. To take it or leave it. Right. Sure. Look, the other side is saying the same thing. They're saying everyone has to agree with them. Yeah. OK, so look, everybody has a position. The only question is which position is true. Yeah, it's always interesting. They they say that we are. Um, wanting to get into the public education system with our religion when they've had their alphabet religion there since the start. Oh, and, and there's, there's no viewpoint neutrality. Whether you're gonna say that something ought to be in the schools or not, it is a viewpoint that you're proposing. Yeah. Even the viewpoint that says we ought to be neutral, which is, which is impossible, is not a neutral viewpoint. It's, yeah. saying, yeah. it's saying that neutrality is the right way. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> That's yeah. full absolute on, yeah. on neutrality. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What would you have to say concerning um, the, those that would argue, show me the proof of God, show me the evidence of God, and I'll believe you. If somebody says, how do you know that God exists? I say, I know God by his effects. In other words, if there's a creation and there's evidence there is a creation, we're in it and it had a beginning, then the cause of that effect must be a creator. If there's design in the universe and design in life, and there is, 
That's the effect. You're reasoning back to a cause, a designer. designer yeah. If there's a moral law written on our hearts, there are certain things that are right, certain things that are wrong. That's the effect. The cause must be an unchanging moral standard that we're all obligated to obey. That's what we mean by God. Yeah. If there's evidence that a man predicted and accomplished his own resurrection from the dead, and there is, that's the effect, you're reasoning back to a cause. What could have caused a man to predict and accomplish his own resurrection from the dead? Only a being like God. So you're reasoning from effect back to cause. Even if you say you've had some sort of personal experience with God, you're doing the same thing. You're saying the personal experience is the effect and the cause is God. So you're always reasoning from effect back to cause. That's what scientists do. They look for effects and they try and figure out what caused the given effect. So I just kind of summarize three major arguments, four major arguments for God. One is called the cosmological argument, the argument from the creation of the universe. The second is called the design argument, the argument from the design of the universe and the design of life. The third is the moral argument. There's a moral standard, so there must be a moral law giver. And the fourth is the evidence that Jesus actually rose from the dead. I didn't give any evidence, we don't have time, but if you had time, you could show that Jesus rose from the dead, and so what could have caused that? So you're reasoning from effect back to cause. How are you seeing students receive the truth that you're sharing here, and how are you seeing them? Are, are they open to the, to the possibility of an absolute truth that could be founded upon such thing as a word of God? Well, some are. The word of God. Yeah, some are. What some response are you getting? Well, here's a question I ask to people who are resistant. If Christianity were true, would you become a Christian? And a lot of times they'll hesitate or say no. Because it's not a head problem, it's a heart problem. They don't want it to be true because they don't want there to be a God because they want to be God of their own lives. So always ask the question, if Christianity were true, would you become a Christian? If the person hesitates or says no, it's not a head problem, it's a heart problem. So what do you do for such a people? You pray for them, you uh, plant seeds, Bless them. you love them, which doesn't mean you approve of everything they do. That's a confusion we should talk about. What is love? And then you wait. Why do you wait? because sometimes people are only going to be open when something tragic happens to them and tragedy happens to all of us, then they might be interested at that point. So they never pray. call in the name of Allah when the plane's going yeah, down. Yeah, no, no, that's right. I never heard Buddha on an airplane <laughs> that's right, during that's turbulence. Right. Uh -huh. How convenient. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, Allah, it's so true. Well, tell everyone where they can um, go get more of this information and yeah, go listen to you. If they go to crossexamine.org, cross-examine with a D on the end of it, .org. They'll see everything we do, including the I Don't Have Enough Faith to Be an Atheist podcast, the TV show, all the social media. But if we have a minute, do we have another minute? Yes, we do. I, I, wanna, I wanna point out what I think is the biggest mistake people make when they think wokeness is correct. And that is, they think that love means approval, Gabe. Love does not mean approval. If your parents approved of everything you wanted to do when you were 10 years old, would they have been loving? No, love stands in the way of Quite evil. the opposite. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to enable evil. And in, in, the, in the chapter that everyone reads at their wedding, but nobody obeys, 1 Corinthians 13, Paul says, love always protects. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing. Love rejoices in the truth. So you need to stand in the way of evil to love people. You don't approve of everything they do. That would be enabling them. You need to stand in the way and that's what we do when we love people. Love isn't all about approval. Love is about seeking what's best for the loved one. And that requires you, if you're gonna love them properly, to stand in the way of any evil they wanna do. That's so true. You know, there's, there's only one pad in the car that, that'll actually stop you, and it's the brakes. That's right. And, and you don't tell yourself that you're being limited or oppressive when no. you say that you only need to step on the brakes when you're about to run off a cliff. Yeah, that's a good point, exactly. Yeah, it's very similar to what you're saying. Well, thank you so much thank for you, the interview. Gabe. And right. uh, we look forward to the next time seeing you. Thanks, God. God bless. Appreciate it.